So the only way to develop a palette is to develop a palette. <laughs> I know, it makes total sense, doesn't it? We're talking about art. We're talking about how to grow with art. You know, new music, new art, that sort of thing. Good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. I'm just a dude on a bike. I don't know anything. I'm trying to evolve as a filmmaker, as a writer, and as a human being. Hey, good morning. I am grateful to be on the ride with you this morning. Still got some water run off over here. Here's a bicycling tip for you. If you don't like getting to work with a wet butt, use fenders. <laughs> I don't like a wet butt, but I also don't like fenders, so there's a compromise there, meaning I have a wet butt. <laughs> it's sprinkler season. That's all right. So I've been reading again. We've got all these balloons up in the sky today. So cool. Hey, good morning. What? A lot of noise today. Sorry, folks. I heard that hum starting at about three o'clock this morning. I don't know what it was. I thought maybe it was traffic. It woke me up. It was really loud. I don't know, I think they were street cleaning, maybe cutting concrete somewhere. Man, look at all the balloons, that's so cool. Doing some sort of balloon rally through here. You guys able to see that one? Hey, on your left here. All right. Now we're through the traffic jam there. Keep <laughs> traffic jamming out. We do get conditioned getting to ride the bicycle, don't we? Oh, there goes that blue heron. So I've been rereading this uh, uh, essay by Jeanette Winderson called Art Objects. And it's in her collection of essays called Art Objects. Hey, right behind you. And uh, it's a, book. <laughs> it's a book of essays on art and literature. Hey, good morning, right behind you. And it came out about 20 years ago, because I read that when I was still working downtown San Francisco. The nonprofit management support group One is this I say that she's written is really fantastic talking about art and how we come into art and one of the things that I believe in see I I studied music in college so I was a classically trained musician and then I studied poetry and writing so I was a classically trained writer so hopefully with this film project this first feature film project that I'm trying to do I'm able to kind of teach myself the, uh, the, in the same way, because I understand the basics of, you know, how we take theory and bring that into artwork. Speaking of artwork, check out what they're doing here on the trail. This is so great. Hey, good morning. Love what you're doing so much. Hey, on your right here. Hey, good morning. So they are painting these tunnels, or this one tunnel at this point. Hopefully they'll be painting some other tunnels soon. I think it's a great idea. Whoo, tiny wall ride, one-handed. Oh, that was silly. <laughs> but they're painting these tunnels and I think it's just a great idea. Boise's got it on point for their art and public spaces. That's for sure. I really appreciate that about getting to live here. 
especially along the green belt. Like over here, under this bridge, there's some uh, pop-up street art from time to time. They pretty much paint over it by the end of the day, which is unfortunate because a lot of times it's better than, well, some of the other art that we see around. I'm more attracted to it, and that's the point. It's one of the things that uh, Miss Winterson talks about in this essay is uh, she talks about how art takes time. Later on in the essay, she talks about how love takes time. The whole essay, the, the structure of the essay, is how she has this sudden love for a painting. So the first thing she does as a writer is run into the bookstore across the street so that she doesn't have to face the art because she doesn't know art. And this is one of the things that she t gets at in this essay talks about in a culture that doesn't need art what does that mean about the culture I can you know we uh, we like to use art for ornamentation more than we like to use it for um, actually representing the world around us or trying to grow I am so sorry I am so disjunct this morning folks all the balloons and people kind of got me off. Plus, I took some crappy photos for the header image in this, and that really bothers me. I used to be really careful about it. Now I've got this new iPhone. It's got a great camera in it, so I've been using it a lot rather than carrying my DSLR. Plus, it's really hot. I know. I'm just whining about it. Ooh, <clears throat> we have a geese convention. Geese convention, goose convention. I don't know which is which. But Winterson talks about how art takes time. And then she goes into like a museum experience, which in most urban museums, like when Jennifer and I are in the San Francisco Bay Area, we love going to SF MoMA, Museum of Modern Art there, and hanging out with some of our old friends. There's a couple of Rothkos that I absolutely love. Some Jackson Pollock's, Rauschenberg, Jasper Johns. There's a Helen Frankenthaler that I love there. I think that was the one that introduced me to her, actually. And we talk about, like, if you go there on a Saturday, there's so many people, it's hard to see the art. I don't ever feel like I can really hang out with it because there's either this constant flow of people and energy around me or, you know, you're just kind of getting pushed along with the crowd. So a lot of times it's just kind of first impressions, which, you know, any first impression of a person is not like a full impression of that person, right? Like the first time you meet someone, it's like, generally you think, oh, I kind of dig this person or not. But that's about as far as you get. You don't really know like how they think about things. How did they come to be the person that they are? Um, was there a big change in their life? Have they always been someone that you'd like? And art is really no different. The reason I'm talking about this is because uh, we got someone behind us that's wanting to scoot along so we get out of the way. It's because I'm trying, like I was saying, I was try I'm trying to do this with film, kind of my own film school, history, theory. Like I was talking, I think it was last Thursday, about reference films. I, uh, watched the Clouds of Sils Maria on Oliver Assay's film last night. And I really dig it because I don't, I don't really get it, but it's beautiful. I mean, I'm attracted to the aesthetic of it. And so the aesthetic kind of anchors me when the story kind of goes, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> um, it's a fantastic film. <sighs> Mm, and that was a fantastic nap. Mmm, yummy. So, here's a homework assignment for you. Go watch Clouds of Sils Maria, Oliver Says, so that we can talk about it. Let's see, what is today? It's Thursday. Look at all the folks out, man. And I am quite late here. Hey, coming around your left.
so one of the things that Winterson gets at is our experience of art, how we experience art. And uh, how our first impression, a lot of times with an artwork is just simply, do I like this? And a lot of times in the museum experience, that's about as far as we get because uh, we feel pressure to move on or something. But when we have a moment with some artwork, hey, coming around your left here. Hey, on your left, brother. When we do have a moment with art, hopefully we can say, do I like this, don't I like it? And hopefully we'll have time to get into the, well, what do I like about it? What don't I like about it? One of the things that Winterson also gets at is the fact that a lot of times the artwork challenges our notion of ourself. And we ask, we're not asking the right questions. We're not asking, do I like it, don't I like it, and why? But we're maybe getting into why would someone do this or why is this considered art? I could do that. A lot of times, especially with uh, conceptual contemporary art. I mean, I'll, I admit it, I wrestle with that too. Some of them I dismiss outright and then I go back and read about it and it's like, oh, they made a painting in the same way that a four-year-old would, but they uh, found some novel process that they can use to produce that artwork. So asking why someone would do something like that doesn't, doesn't get, get me anywhere closer to it. The thing that I really loved that Winterson articulated for me, I know I'm just kind of basically telling you about this essay. I've got a stop sign here. No, I don't think we usually stop. We're bikers. <laughs> Thank you. She was talking about this idea of make it new. And as a writer, as an artist herself, I think she's after the same thing with her writing. That is, how to make it new. Oh, that is still really wet. Taking the piggy pads today. But in her opinion of art, which I share, is that make it new means how do you extend a tradition of art? It's, it's one thing to do something unique, but is it unique? Is it, um, is it something that is just unique to itself or is it a new way of doing another thing? I mean, blues is basically Mozart. You know, the way he uses that secondary dominant. Get those seventh chords going. Yeah. You can find that in Mozart. Actually, some of the best ragtime music is in the late Whoa. Beethoven piano sonatas, which I think is kind of interesting. Sounds a lot like Scott Joplin, some of those, some of the lines, not so much the music, obviously. The harmonic textures of those pieces are quite a bit different than the harmonic textures of ragtime, though. They do clearly have some sort of relationship to one another. The thing that struck me rereading this essay, I haven't probably read this essay in 10, 15 years, and so getting to reread it as someone who is now struggling with learning about a new art form, a new way of expression for me um, in a tradition, having reference films thinking, okay, so how does Chris Marker do this? How does Oliver Assays deal with story? How does he deal with mystery? Um, that's the most fascinating thing I think about the clouds of Sils Maria for me, is that I think he, I think he balances mis mystery and obscurity really, really well. Obscurity is discomforting. Mystery is enticing, right? Um, and sometimes you want to leverage either one of those 
to a particular effect in your narrative, but but generally people prefer mystery over obscurity. The thing that I read last night that really connected with me, and I'm talking with Jennifer about this just a little bit as we were falling asleep. Morning. Was that the artist is about the problem. And we talked through different ideas of that. So like right now, my problem is how do you make a film about food and water supply, about deforestation, using the story of a professional musician who moves from being a professional pianist to finally being the professional cellist that she's always wanted to be. So that's my problem. How do you do that film? The story is one thing. The narrative is another. You know, the story is the what happens, the plot. But then there's the narrative, and that is the how does this happen? And uh, if you take a look at Chris Marker's films, now I'm not saying go and watch that if you're not into watching art films, but the thrust of Winterson's essay is that art takes time and in order to develop a palette, you have to develop a palette. So I have to watch films that challenge me. I have to watch films that I don't necessarily like. Um, one of the things that I am finding is that those films take energy. And so I find that on a Saturday after doing some yard work, after doing some writing in the morning, I'm a lot better shape to actually do, to watch a tough film Friday night the end of a work week? Not so much. No, give me some Marvel Cinematic Universe on a Friday night. Thank you very much. Um, but then on Saturday night, yeah, let's watch uh, Manifesto with Kate Blanchett. You want to go out there? That film goes out there. I love that film so much. Um, anyway, folks, that's it for me today. Um, I guess the whole idea here is that I'm just trying to develop my palette as an one who appreciates film so that then I can start figuring out, you know, what is it that I enjoy about a particular film? What um, bothers me about it? What am I attracted to? Uh, so that in my own projects, I'm going to be able to incorporate those ideas um, more intentionally. And uh, that's really with this uh, Poco a Poco project, that's really, really what I'm interested in is uh, a sincere intentionality. Um, I've got another film that I just kind of want to write it and get it done um, just to kind of for the experience of doing a film but Poco a Poco that's a very special one to me it's it's going to be a poetic meditation um, that doesn't mean that it's going to be a slow film but it's probably going to be an art film it's probably going to take time uh, it's taking me time so I hope that when it's done that other people will take time to watch it and and be able to ask hey do I like this do I not and why folks this is the only ride we get. I hope that uh, uh, if you love riding a bicycle, that you get out on your bike, that you get out on your ride, whatever your ride is. Maybe it is um, reading essays about art and effrontery. <laughs> if it is, I highly recommend Jeanette Winterson's Art Objects. It is a fantastic collection of essays. It is older. Um, her Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit, a novel that she wrote, was also really, really fantastic. Love that one, too. Um, just love her writing in general. Um, fantastic, fantastic writer. Folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. Thanks for letting me ride with you today. I appreciate, appreciate it so, so very much. Oh, by the way, uh, a lot of people have been asking. The On Your Left t-shirts are now available at morningridepodcast.com. You can go out there and get those if you are interested. Um, I appreciate those of you who have already purchased those. Let's help us, uh, you know, pay for the website that hosts the Morning Ride podcast, um, which is not super expensive, but it sure means a lot to me when uh, people go out and support us financially. And actually, even more so, uh, you know, when you send us an email or, um, you know, find us on Twitter and Instagram, you like something that we post out there, that's surely helpful for us. It, it is encouraging to know that, hey, we're connecting with people. And they probably don't know why, because this is such a ridiculous little podcast. Hey, folks, uh, thanks so much for letting me ride with you. I hope that you have a fantastic weekend. I am super excited to ride with you again on Monday. Um, man, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. This is the only ride we get. 